What's cracking, everybody? My new smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Healing to you from Dallas, Texas. And we're here for another episode of the PHP Podcast. And I'm super fired up because we've got a very special guest today, an Olympian athlete who today is a senior vice president of PHP Agency. In addition to that, we'll be talking about how to become more likable. So therefore, you can attract and build the agency and, the, and build the business that funds and finances your dreams. The other part of this also is how do you live those dreams? We're not just selling the dream. We're living the dream. My co-host today, Rodolfo Vargas, we just came back, and our guest today, we just came back from a all-expenses-paid trip to Tulum, Mexico. And without me even sharing much about it, I want to introduce my co-host today, first-generation cash flow millionaire, board counsel, immigrant from El Salvador, hailing from Houston, Texas. Rodolfo Vargas, are you fired up about our show today? Matt, we are fired up. We're fired up for the trip. We're fired up for the for the podcast. We're fired up for March Madness. How you call it? Monster March that we're going to be having. But guess what? Like you said, we have the first time, first time in history that we have an Olympian. Okay? Somebody that went to the Olympics. Okay? Uh, an athlete that is also senior vice president, the one and only Sable Ote. She's going to be here with us. So, Matt. I'm, I'm fired up about that. We're, we also have a report to share with you, a diversity, inclusion, and equity report of PHP Agency. If you've ever wondered, what's the leading organization in the insurance industry that's attracting the most multicultural agents in the marketplace? We'll share with you our data. We'll share with you our report and reveal our numbers. And also, our guest today is also going to highlight the PHP ladies because she is a part of that too as well. So I'm fired up. Let's get started. If you haven't done so already, please share this podcast and make sure you tune in and uh, fire away with your questions in the chat box too, uh, because we're going to get started here in episode PHP Agency 38, starting in three, two, one, let's go. All right, we are back. Paul's in the house, the team's in the house. I'm fired up. Uh, Rodolfo. Looks like you got this nice little uh, 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 Mexican tan going on. What's up oh, with you, bro? Yeah, we got a little bit of tan. We went to Mexico and uh, we had a blast. And uh, and we have all of the trips coming up, but we, this one was very, very special. I'm going to tell you, this was one of the most special trips we ever had in our career. We had a blast. I went with my two boys. I know you were with, your, with Jordan. We saw Jordan over there, and I, I went with Milo, with Enzo, the family. And I got my in-laws over there, and we had a blast. We ate all-inclusive uh, resort over there in Mexico, so we had a blast. Um, so, yeah, we're excited. We, we had a little bit of a 10, but guess what? On Monday, we started the diet. We started the <laughs> diet because when you go to the strip, you get to eat too much. But, but anyway, we have a guest today. Yes. We have a guest. From an athlete, you know, many people you, you, you says, can an athlete make it? You guys, this business, it was made, my opinion, for athletes because we're like athletes in a, in a business. And uh, she's an athlete. She said she went to the Olympics and um, she's killing it over here in the business. And uh, they were also over there in, uh, in Mexico. So let me introduce uh, Sable Ote. Sable, do we have you on the line? Yes, sir. Yes. Thanks so much. I'm super excited to be on the call today. Sable, what's up? Awesome. Yeah. Everything's great here. The, the Triple M organization of PHP Agency. Sable, tell everybody what your team name means. Our team name is Triple M Making Multimillionaires. Oh, making multimillionaires. Yeah. Making multimillionaires. Mm. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> And Sable is one of the newest senior vice presidents of PHP Agency. And uh, listen, I, I'm, I'm very excited for her. Her husband, Ruben, spelled R-E-U-B-E-N, Ruben, a Navy veteran. So you got a Navy veteran husband, Olympic track star slash bobsled athlete uh, combined together. They have an explosive business. So uh, Sable, tell, uh, tell her, we know your story, obviously, but tell everybody a little bit about your background and how you stumbled into the financial services industry with PHP. Okay. So I actually uh, grew up here in Memphis, Tennessee. My husband and I, we actually went to high school together. And uh, my husband graduated uh, the very next year. I was still in school. I was 12th grade. We got married in high school. So we eloped. Uh, parents didn't know. And then after that, my husband got into the military. We moved to San Diego. We lived there for 10 years where we met Mr. Chris Richardson. 
uh, he actually is like a brother to us. He got us into the business. Um, after we left San Diego, I was actually training um, for the Olympic trials for track while I was actually there. Ended up getting pregnant while I was there in San Diego. Didn't get a chance to try out. Okay. And I was wondering why I was running so fast. Like when you have those like pregnancy hormones, like, you know, you get more energy. I'm like, what the world? So I'm like, I'm running the fastest I've ever run in my life. And I go to the doctor and I'm like, oh, I'm pregnant. Right. So, but anyways, so I uh, moved back to Memphis and uh, after I moved back to Memphis, I pretty much thought sports was pretty much out of the question for me. Cause you know, mom, kids, you know, gotta be domestic wife, you know, those things. And so um, I ended up trying out for the bobsled team. And so I had never thought about trying out for bobsled anything because I didn't even know anything about it. My god brother told me to try out for it. And it's always been a, a you know, some people always see stuff in me that I didn't see in myself. So he was like, you should do it. You've always been great. I'm like, okay, I'll go do it, right? So go out to uh, Greenville, South Carolina, try out for the bobsled team, uh, make the bobsled team. And then, man, Chris followed up with us another time uh, to come into the business. And th at this point, it's been five years. And uh, after you follow up with us for the fifth year, and I can talk to you about a series of things that happened to us a little later, uh, we decided we were going to go ahead and, and give the business a shot. At this time, I had already gotten into bobsled and uh, getting ready to try to make my way over uh, to Korea. And uh, after that happened, after I got back to from Korea, uh, everything is pretty much history from there. And that's when I actually met Matt right before we actually um, went over to Korea. Matt came down in 2017, I remember it clear as day, the day after Christmas to come pour into us. And then that very next month was big event. I think January, February, I was um, our uh, mid-year, went to that event. And from there, we, I went to Korea. And after I came back from Korea, we were ready to rock and roll because I had fuel from the big event. I was just ready to go. That's it. That's, that's Peyong Chong, Korea. And uh, it, it, was, it was a very weird Olympics because this time around it was in China. I think it's probably one of the lowest rated watched Olympics in the history of the Olympics. Um, what, 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 was your, what was your thoughts when you saw your sis, brothers and sisters you know, in, in, the, in Olympic uniform? Obviously, you're not, you're not there because you're building a business now. But you know, it, was, it was not very well received or watched. Maybe it's the political environment that we're in right now. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, this year was completely different. Uh, you know, pandemic has changed a lot of things. Uh, yeah, I, I uh, man, I think everybody has so much other stuff going on. Um, it, I don't, you know, I don't, I really don't know. I really think the pandemic just really took a toll on everybody. And so a lot of things weren't going the way people thought it would go traditionally, how it usually is. Even the audience, you know, people couldn't really, as many people couldn't be there, they, they usually were to be there to physically support. If you notice uh, the winter sports, they're more common and more popular during Olympic time. Whereas the summer sports, they're popular all year long, you know, every year outside of the Olympic year too, right? Like football is always popular, basketball, but ice skating, like nobody's really watching ice skating until it's actually, you know, Olympic year. So it was just very- I, I'm, I'm sorry, Sable, I think I watched, I, I, I put it on my phone. I have the app downloaded for curling. So no. I'm, a, I'm an average watcher of curling with brooms and discs going down the ice. No way. <laughs> curling is like, it's like watching <laughs> paint drop. It's actually really fun to play with somebody. Because I'm not a curler at all, but like our friends, when we went to Europe, we uh, trained on the, we call it the Europa Cup circuit. When we went to Europe, we actually had the opportunity to curl. Curling is, I don't know, it's a very, it's a tough, tough sport. Uh, it's like watching pig dry to watch it though. Like if you watch a sport, but it's fun to play with friends. It's a cool, it's, it's kind of fun to do. Like if you're playing with a group of people. R Rodolfo, you know what I'm talking about when I say curling? Yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I've been <laughs> trying to watch it. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know the roots. I don't get it. I I, 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 listen, if you're around me with a broom, we're cleaning <laughs> something, right? You're not playing a sport. If you're around Filipinos and Latinos, African American, you come with the, around with us with the broom. We're cleaning something. We're not playing an Olympic sport, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. broom, the broom is used to make the ice slippery, slippery. So, like when you push the stone down the ice, you want the stone to get right there in a red circle, and so you use the broom to keep the ice going. Ah. You know, keep the, the stone going to to hit that perfect spot, and so you're trying to get you score more points when you hit it inside of the red circle. Believe me, we don't we don't play the, we don't have any ice in El Salvador. Okay, we don't play any. <laughs> so, uh, 
So let me ask you a question on the on this Olympic side before we go into business. I mean, you being an athlete, like at what age do you get started being an athlete? Uh, I've been an athlete uh, since I would, could I probably breathe. <laughs> I've been running track for uh, since I was in uh, middle school. So it started there running track. Um, so you were what, like 10 years old, 11 years old? Probably, no. probably, about, probably about 10. Probably about 10. I started before that, but before I started really getting serious about it and waking up doing crunches in the living room, you know, it was probably about 10 somewhere. By the way, there, I right? was watching some videos, by the way, Matt, of uh, Sable Ote, and you see, she jumped. She's strong. She had the six pack, everything insane over there on YouTube before before the meeting. But we got, we got video? Say, we got video? I was I just found some videos from Sable Ote. Now, let's check out some videos here of Sable Ote, Olympic athletes, now PHB agency, senior vice president. Yeah, insane. But but before we go in any videos, Sable, tell me tell me about the, I mean, what's the discipline of an Olympic? Because let me tell you what I asked, because I swim when I was a kid. And I, oh, I you're, you're a good swimmer. You're a good swimmer, bro. You're, you're like a fish. I, I, we, we were swimming. I was seven years old, eight years old. And we used to swim at 4 a.m. in the morning for four to six and then come back in the afternoon to swim from five to seven. We were swimming four hours early in the morning, in the afternoon, and it was insane, the diet and everything. And uh, you know what I'm talking about if you're an athlete. So people don't know that part of an athlete. So tell me, tell me about that discipline that you used to have when you were a kid, not when you were older already, like killing it, when you were a kid. One one thing that I definitely had when I was a kid, uh, the discipline of actually just uh, putting in the work. I've never had a problem putting in the work, never. And so, as a matter of fact, uh, I would overwork sometimes. You know, they tell you you can only do five. I'm like, let me do one more, one more. My one more turned into twenty more. Uh, so you know, that was that was my biggest asset. I've never had an issue working. Like if if it wasn't a talent or ability that I had, I was willing to work to get it. Right. So. Definitely just putting in the work. Um, I've never, 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 never had an issue with that. Now, I will say I had not always believed in myself, but what I did believe in was people that believed in me. So, and, you know, I would take what they would say. I'm like, all right, I think I can do this. We're going to go go in here. We're going to go get this long jump or we're going to get this high jump. We're going to get these points for the team. But I, who my work ethic. Who, who, who believed in you? Was your parents? Was a coach? Who? How, yeah, who? absolutely. My parents, definitely my coaches. You know, growing up, um, I grew up here in Memphis. I lived in Binghamton. Uh, and so just did not have a lot of, didn't come from a lot of money. So my first, the first line of, 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 of people that believed in me was my coach, his name was Coach Young. And then my godmom from high school, Malika Collins. Uh, those are my two supports outside of my family. They were, played a huge role, helping me with shoes, helping me with mental, mental capacity, uh, just anything I needed, you know, they were there, you know, to get us to the trips because we were going out of town. You know, I started at a younger age, going back and forth out of town to compete and getting exposed to different areas and different competitors. So it, it started with those two guys, a teacher, which is mainly why I actually became a teacher uh, prior to getting into PHP and my coach or my two huge influencers and my and my godparents too. Absolutely. My godparents, my goddad and my godmother. Uh, she recently just uh, just passed this left us here a couple of weeks ago. But those guys, those guys carried me uh, throughout my childhood outside of my family. Well, you know, that's crazy. That a person can make a difference. So you mentioned the, the coaches, you mentioned the teacher. It's powerful. The the, the cat parents. But anyway, uh, Matt, do we have any? Do we have any video? Did you find I, anything? I I, I actually I, I didn't. Uh, uh, Sable, did you have any that you can uh, share on your end, or can you send them over to me? What do you think? Yeah, I can. I can. Uh, um, I think Coach had one pulled up. I can pull up the one he was looking at for the high jump when I started, and see if I can find some a little later in the podcast for the for the. Yeah, box. yeah, we can, we can, we can, we can do it. We can. Is it in a chat? Put if, if you put in the chat thing, I can share okay. it over here too as well. Okay, gotcha. So a couple oh, of many over here. This is strong. Yeah. By the way, there's a lot of people here watching this uh, live chat. Right now, Miriam Rivera is on. Tanya Tanya Gordon is on. Glenda Warren is on. Ron Goolsby is on. Kim Camper is on. Olivia Perez Reyes, Raylin Valle, uh, extending sorry for your loss, Sable. We extend sorry for your loss too. Um, but uh, we we got we got a bunch of uh, questions. If by the way, we have questions. Uh, we're gonna be taken here at the end of the pod, towards the end of the podcast. So make sure your questions for Sable 
or Rodolfo or myself are on standby. And uh, if so, if you answer your question, you have the opportunity to win the book of the month, which is Ooh. Barbarians to Bureaucrats. Barbarians to Bureaucrats, Bureaucrats. That is the book of the month for PHP agency in the month of Monster March. Okay, so um, let's let's take a look. Let me make sure I, I, I want. Okay, okay. Look, look at the stud at. Hold on. Let's let's make sure we. Uh, all, right. all right, here we go. Let's, let, let's share. Let's share this. Make sure I share the sound here. All right, we are go. We are going to video. We are going to video. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh oh, see, it was ready to rock. Here we go. Oh yeah, are you by the way? High jumping? No, it's a high jump. Oh, nice, nice. Look at the other one. Put the put the other one. Look at look at. She got a lift. Right. She got a lift. Concentration. Here we go. Lift. Here we go. And up. Ah! I'm talking about Willis. High jumping. Hey, what, what is that? Oh, what, five, this is 2011. Yep, that was 11. 511. Girl, you're up high. How old were you at that time? I was still pretty young. I think I was 20. I might have been 2011. I think it was about 20, 1920, maybe 20. I think maybe 19, actually, because this was community college even still. I, I, outside the bump in her outside the bump in her belly, she looks the same, man. Well, maybe not all of them. Crazy feels. Oops, let me shut this off. I hear some noise. There you go. Yep, I said outside that bump in her belly, she looks, she looks the same, brother. You know, how how long have you been, Ruben? How long have you and Ruben been married now? I'll be 17 years in April. Yeah. 17 years in April. Well, congratulations, Ruben. Thank you. When is <laughs> so, so tell us now the experience of PHP. So, so you are an athlete. You, you are competitive. I believe you need to be competitive. You're disciplined. And all of a sudden, you're doing this business. And uh, how's been the experience of uh, doing this business now? To be honest, um, moving from a competitive standpoint to uh, a business standpoint in PHP, if you allow me to share my screen, I can share a couple little pictures here with you too. I think we can. Uh, I'm okay to do that. All right. What's, I'm here. Uh, yep, I got it. You got it? Okay. Yep. And so guys, um, this here, guys, is my story in a nutshell. Like I was telling you guys, I um, me, my husband, my son at the time of one, I got two, but three, yeah, I'm pregnant, went on the way. And so, guys, if you can see here, um, during all this time, this stuff happened while we were, uh, I think, right before PHP. No, this actually happened, yeah, right before PHP. The incident with my son with the broken leg, my husband getting hit by the 18-wheeler, and me making the bobs, team. all this stuff happened together. And so... Um, so, wait, 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 wait. So, something happened to your son? So, some, so, so, if you see the picture here, actually, this, yes. actually, after I make the bobsled team, you go back. After I make the bobsled team, okay. What this, year is this? This was 2015 I made the bobsled. No. Wow. So your son broke his 2016 leg. I made the bobsled team. Your son broke his legs in the accident? So my son broke his leg. It was, it was an accident at a home. So actually, um, it's 2015. I had made the bobsled team. I came home on Super Bowl Sunday to visit my family because I had been gone training for some time. And they were in the room playing uh, with some friends and some family. And I went in the room and his leg was broke. I guess they were horse playing. And so we rushed him over to um, to Le Bonner and they said his leg was broken and put him in a double-legged cast. And he had that cast on for some time. And um, we had to create an aqua therapy program for him to help him walk again. Um, wow. for our son. How old was he? He was three. And so, you know, just to go in a room and see this, and then you see the leg just bulging through the pants, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, like I know his leg is broken. Wow. And so, you know, this happened before, prior to PHP. I'm sorry, this actually happened prior to PHP. And so that happened. And then four months later, if you look at the picture above, my husband got hit by a truck. That happened. So when my son got into got the accident with his leg, my husband had to switch jobs. And he took a major pay cut. And we had just purchased a home at that point, that house we were in the background on the top right hand corner. And so when he took the pay cut, we already kind of started getting behind a little bit on everything. And 
you know, bobsled is a self-funded sport. So at this point, I'm trying to learn how to push the sled. I'm trying to get extra training. So a lot of money was coming out, but not a lot of coming in. And then four months later, my husband got into the trucking accident. I was at a church getting ready to do a, um, a community service and they were going to give me a sponsorship in return. So my husband calls me and or somebody from his phone calls me and say he was in an accident. And I'm like, oh, you know, I, I was trying to, you know, talk to him. Oh, my God, I got to go. My husband got into an accident. Like I beat the ambulance to the hospital. And so get there. He's a neck brace. He can't do anything. And so um, from there, once he started to get better, um, Chris called Christopher Richardson, called out of nowhere. I was like, how's it going, brother? And he's like, it's not going. <laughs> it's like not going at all, as a matter of fact. And again, this is a five year follow up. So all this stuff had happened. At this point, we're literally not we didn't know what we were going to do. Um, we didn't really have a lot of extra financial resources or people around us that had the extra financial resources. So we're literally facing eviction. Let's just be honest. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to get $7,000 tomorrow? Like, you know, by the end of this month, this was Christmas. This was December. This is, you know, so my la the last thing on my mind was Christmas gifts. I was trying to figure out how we were going to, you know. And so um, um, Chris um, had come in. Uh, yep, that's my Facebook. Chris had come in and, um, and, and told us about the opportunity. And that's when we kind of just kind of ran with it. And then I have here a picture of uh, when we actually went to our first event on uh, a big event, if I can use it. Yeah, can you show it again? Yeah. Yep. This is our first big event, right? And that, like, that was the first one. Oh, that was uh, New Orleans. Yes. This one was in New Orleans, yes. And that's where I just I just saw this picture. I didn't realize I had it, where we had the the uh, helmet there, and we had um, the scarf and the suit. I didn't realize I had a suit. So we auctioned off a couple of things. Like, you know, uh, Pat just, I mean, Matt just gave a couple of the items away. And then in return, you know, just to support me to get to Korea, he wrote me a check. And I'm like, at this point, I hadn't even been really, no, I didn't really know the business. Um, I didn't, I wasn't very active. I was there as a supporting spouse. And I'm like, man, this is on a stage where like, Matt helped me get to be on chain. Like, I wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for him, right? So it just said a lot to me just to kind of come into a company, see people that truly cared about you. And I hadn't even really, really contributed. I hadn't really helped many families with policies yet. I hadn't really learned the business quite yet. I was just excited. And, you know, I told, we, you know, he always, always asked the stories, so, you know, what, tell us about you, you know, tell us about your story. So, you know, just getting to tell him about it and tell him like we're, how we're getting ready to go to the, to the Olympics, trying to get over to Peel and Chang and, the rest was history and you know from there it was just it's just been such a great honor just to be able to represent our country you know what to be a part of an amazing i was looking at the um chart you were showing like how diverse we are our 42 percent hispanics 32 percent um african-american 13 percent caucasian 11 percent other like just looking at that you know and then being able to go out to different uh, tracks to race and meet all these different cultures and you realize how blessed you are to be in America <laughs> like it's really because like talking to these these guys like they don't they don't have as much you know and it's like we're the land of the free so it was a great honor to be able to wear USA on my back but these are just some of the pictures of, of me you know at different various uh stops where we train the picture with my driver here um I was still training here her name is Anna we were in uh, we were in um Utah you see Utah Olympic Park they have a track there and so the one down here is this one is actually in Lake Placid. We would actually at the bottom right hand corner. That's where we would actually train. Man, that that track there. That's that track is as a lot of turns, a lot of twists and turns there. But um, that's literally, man. That's that's literally how everything kind of kind of went. But it was just like one event after the next. But everything just kind of led into um, getting into PHP. And then I would tell people too when I when I got into PHP, of course, but everybody's looking for an opportunity, right? free enterprise, like, you know, they're trying to figure out how can they achieve that level of financial freedom. But I always tell people like it went from more than just being looking for income and went from really just finding my, from looking for income to truly finding my purpose in this business or finding my purpose in, in life. You know, I'm like, like, Lord, why am I still here? What do I need to actually be doing? And it went to me actually really finding my purpose. And my purpose is is really to educate it and, and be a blessing to someone else. And so I really find joy in that and what I do here in PHP. Sable, you know, like you, you mentioned a comment earlier that Olympic sports is not something that people do 
all year round. It's, it's not like you're curling all year round. Oh, I guess some people do, but yeah. you're definitely not bobsledding all year round. I mean, how many times did you have to go on runs, training runs to you, for you and your driver to master that track? <laughs> well, we don't go on runs all the time. So they're made, they, they just switch us out. So it's not so hard on our bodies, but you do take a lot of runs so that the driver can become efficient. So when you first get back to training, they haven't, you gotta remember, they haven't driven in a while because there's, there's, there's no snow in the summertime. So there's a little bit of, it's a little rocky when you first get back into it and the, the, the brake woman, that's what we're calling brakeman, we can feel it like, oh, that was a rocky run, you know? <laughs> but you have to take a lot of runs. And in the summertime when there's no ice, when we cannot take runs, there's other things that we can do to supplement. I was trying to find some pictures on that too. We do power lifts, we do car pushes, like we legit push cars. Uh, we do a lot of hill sprints. We do a lot of short sprints. We do a lot of sled pulls. That's that's those are all things to uh, get your speed up and get your power and your explosiveness up. All those things. Yep. You're muted, Coach. You're muted. But it... Coach, you're muted. <laughs> Matt. Well, you're anyway, muted. there you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, there you go. Matt wanted yeah, to show another, another video. There we go pay money and go on this track. So what I'm going to how fast I'm going to go. We each have our own sled that we uh, drive. up to 90 miles an hour depends on what track you're on. you can go up to 90 miles an hour the fastest track that i got to compete on was whistler they told me after we had gone down maybe five or six times, yo, you know that track, it drops like 20 stories the first three turns. I'm like, what? <laughs> 20 stories. So yeah. Awesome. Rodolfo, you have some thoughts? I think Rodolfo's wrong. <laughs> <Rodolfo's wrong. laughs> and, and coach, I do want to add, like just being a competitor, converting over to business, uh to PHP is just like uh, you, you know, we can't, we don't have the physical stamina that we used to have. Yeah. But we can actually do that in the business of the leaders board, right? So it's like you yeah. still can compete. Now it's competition on the leaders bulletin. Yeah. Yep. Rodolfo, you had, you had some follow-up thoughts? Yeah, but, but it's a different topic. I'd like to know about that. now your family now. Right. Because I want to know about the, the your relation with your husband. How many kids you have now? One 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 kid, one son? I got three. <laughs> okay. Three. So so tell us uh how's that? um the olympic business family how's the family doing what experiences you're having with the family how your life is totally different now that now you're running a business over here in php so tell us about your family so yeah i have uh two sons right now a two and a nine year old and i have one on the way another boy i was hoping it was a girl but my husband makes men so um, <laughs> so yeah keep the socks um, on <laughs> right so i guess i'm meant to be a boy mom um but um everything just transitioning over like i said i came in as a, a supporting spouse my husband was the reason why we actually uh, got into business and to be honest i never thought i would learn much um you know from my husband because i felt like i had to grow up at a young age he was in the military but i got into this business and i was sitting there listening when i first started getting really into learning the concepts and i'm like man my husband's kind of like really smart he knows this stuff and so really just seeing the vision in him and um, working the business and seeing him grow really challenged me to actually learn, want to learn and actually grow and learn more of the concepts in business too. But this business in general, I love it because it is, it is, uh, I love it. We were just talking about trips at the beginning, how we're able to take our children and our children get to actually grow up with some of our other uh, colleagues and our business partners. 
we get to actually see that and the kids actually see what it's like to actually build relationships and become entrepreneurs and explore the world together with people that are growing in business. Um, just having that as far as like, the, the you know, and you know, the company PHP, we're, we're very family oriented. I love it about what it is that we actually do and not just growing um, as a single yep. person because we're here for singles, the singles as well, but growing as a unit. And so um, the biggest thing I always say, and you know, the one thing I, I really admire um, about my husband is just like, I always tell people this all the time is growth that I've seen. I've been married, we've been married since I was 18, 19. And I, th I think you can say the same thing, vice versa, how both of us have truly grown uh, from younger uh, individuals to, uh, you know, professionals, you know, in life, marriage, as parents. So, um, you know, just having that as part of PHP is something I've, I've, I've really, I really love. And again, like well, I, I, I want to bring this up. Um, this is the diversity, uh, the DEI report, diversity, equity, and inclusion report, uh, updated by Moral, our chief strat, our chief uh, reputation officer. Mm -hmm. And uh, fifty-three percent of our company are women, licensed agents that are women. Forty-six percent are male. Close to six percent are military veterans. You fit both cues, which is female, military veteran. And another cue that you fit in here is the thirty-two point seven seven percent black. Uh, African American uh, population with inside PHP agency. What what are some of the what are some of the mindsets, uh, myths, misconception of the Black community as it relates to insurance? Hmm. Well, to be honest, when I first started, uh, some of the myths basically you can't be successful. And when I actually went to my first event, I saw that that was not true, especially not in this industry, especially not with our company. Because that's when I went to the event, the picture I showed you with me and my husband with the suit and the dress, that's what really gave me the courage to say, you know what, I can actually do this. I can actually do what it takes to get to that next level because I see people that look like me that are at that, that next level. And of course, we're very, very, very diverse. And it, it did something to me when I saw people, other people, other women that were like me. I know I'm an alpha female. Just having that strong personality and being able to express who you truly are without feeling bad, without making you feel like you're making someone else feel bad, just be able to be you uh, without having to, you know, uh, confirm to those, what, what do you call those other, you know, statistics or however, how are you know, we you think you're supposed to act or be a certain way. And it's just like, uh, I can actually be who I am. I can be that strong individual. I can be that young black individual who can rise above and who can actually be financially free, financially successful. Because growing up, you know, I didn't see people that actually made any more than three, $4,000 a month. So for, for you to actually do it, I remember we were at an event and I was telling Sheena and I was like, oh my God, like my first like big check, I made like 19 grand in a month. I was like, I was, <laughs> in tears. I was in tears and she was like, oh, you know, she was like, you know, this is just the beginning. Like, you know, <laughs> I cannot believe it. I mean, you just start thinking about how you're everything, you know, you're going to lose everything and you just start thinking about everything. Just get a, you know, a whole rush of, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, memories. And it's just like, and then you start thinking like this could be me like i can be that person yep. you know but like, what do you think the php somebody asked that what do you think the php attracts women like you why what is it what Good does question. PHP has that attracted somebody like you php allows us to be us and people see that that's why people are grab people gravitate towards towards php i was just uh, having another conversation we were talking about Another guy from another company was saying, hey, you know, why is it that, you know, you guys thrive and grow in this area and you think we don't? And I was listening to someone else tell this story. And he was like, because in PHP, we give, we give that average person an opportunity. We give that person with the tattoos, the person that may have had this or this going on, person that may not have had this experience or that experience, we give them a chance. And of course, word of mouth, we're gonna go tell everybody, other people are gonna tell other people. And I'm like, man, I wanna try it too. So you give people without trying to profile them you give a regular person an opportunity to get into an industry like this and actually learn to be those professionals that they they see on TV or the people that they go to convention and see. So you, we make it. You guys make it, or PHP makes it um, welcoming for us to, to you know. And then we attract more people that's like us. <laughs> Here's another area of this stat: ninety percent, right here, ninety point ninety point five three percent of PHP licensed agents had zero prior industry oh. experience before joining PHP. Did you? I wouldn't say I actually had experience. I did um, join a company with Chris 
uh, prior to, but I didn't really do anything. I just was there to tag along once again. <laughs> but to be honest, like to have true experience, no, I knew nothing about nothing. Nothing. You know, I, I, I ask this from a lot of our associates all the time. So before PHP agency was the insurance industry, was the insurance industry heavily recruiting you to enter the field of life insurance? No. No. Okay. Now that you're licensed, now that you have a life insurance license, are you now being heavily recruited to consider other options with inside the insurance industry? Oh yeah. Cause it's easy. Cause you know, the work has already been done. So it's like, it's easy to, you know, for people to now come after you. Now they see that you have a license or, you know, it's, yeah. it's easier, but before they know, no calls, nothing. Yeah. And, and Rodolfo, I, I mean, I'm sure you experienced that too as well in, in Houston and your experience. I, I had zero financial service experience before. Rodolfo, let me ask you this question, Sable, of all the opportunities in the marketplace today, obviously you know what you're doing. You figured out the you figured out the game, you figured out recruiting, you figured out selling, you figured out helping to get licensed. What keeps you at PHP and what makes this different in your opinion? Um, once again, uh, just seeing that, you know, we all have that opportunity to grow. It's not about a seniority thing. You can come in and be brand new with no experience, as you saw. And you can and you can level up in this business. Uh, secondly, the mentorship, the training that we get is like no other. People gravitate towards us because the one thing you'll never you'll never be able to say you weren't able to get with us is training. Like we train, 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 train. Everybody's looking for that mentorship, even as an athlete. I want I want that training. I want that top notch training. And having those uh, calls and trainings that we have direct contact with those that are at, that are in the at, you guys, chief distribution officer. Uh, you know. Just having that field advisory board, like having access to that, having access to the CEO, like that's that that's that's different. You don't get that. And so when you have that type of upfront training, it's like, man, okay, I can really do this because I'm learning from the source, right? Just having that type of training, um, it, it's just it's just man, just it's, it's just unlimited in this business. The resources, the opportunity. Um, I mean, I, I I just love it. I it just. And again, the opportunity just just for me to be me, you know, as that alpha female. You, you say something very powerful on the uh, Sable on the on the fact about uh, PHP allowing you to be who you are. That's so true, and I never seen anybody uh, verbalize it the way that you did it, because uh, um, that's right. Like Sapala, he came military guy, tried the industry, he came into. People see Zapala with Jordans in a suit. That's the crit right. people criticize Zapala because he were, but people don't know the story of it. They don't know the story. I know the story because I have his friend. Hey, I never used, to, I, I never had Jordans. Now I have over a hundred Jordans. <laughs> now wear them with suits. I like, they, they, like you're a female, alpha female. I'm an immigrant from El Salvador with an accent and they allow me to lead other people just like me. So interesting what you just say, because that's that's 100% right. We have female, we have immigrants, we have people with tattoos, we have um, we have families, we have husband and wives, we have divorce, we have LGBT, you know, we, we have everything. We have everything. And they allow you to be who you are, just the way you are. You don't have to change. You don't, you don't have to fit a certain type of a, a stereotype we have our ceo which is an immigrant from iran and he's telling the story about his dad working 99 cent store so sable um by the way that's 100 right and let me put it to like this one of the reasons why i do this is because they allow me to be who i am i don't have to be somebody else i can be transparent and i can be honest and i can be who i am and i don't have to look act talk like somebody else and try to be somebody else what a great point sable Right. Opportunity for all is how I see it. So uh, what, what I want to talk about, I want to transition to this topic here is in terms of building a business, building a uh, building a um, a business where you track multiple businesses, you know, say one of your side, I guess, um, I wouldn't say side, you know, what, what you do on the side is you're uh, involved politically. You, you, you're a part of a caucus and it has both Republicans and Democrats. By the interesting State of the Union address last night. I don't know if you have a chance to catch it, but uh, pretty interesting conversation. That's another topic. That's a, right. probably another podcast. 
but very, very interesting uh, topic. Let's just say no masks. Anyway, uh, getting back to the topic here, how can we be more likable? How, how do we attract? Because sometimes people wonder, how come people don't become my customer? How come I have a hard time with re recruiting and retention? Well, sometimes you're just a person that people don't like. And so uh, uh, it, when, when it relates to, to building trust with people, the first stage of building trust with people is hopefully that they like you and open up to trust you. So uh, I want to go over this here real quick. Um, before anyone does any business with you, they must help understand your desire to actually build a relationship. So uh, what, what's your thoughts on building relationships and the likability factor of building relationships to grow an organization? Man, so um, for me, I love, I genuinely love people. Yeah, some people that love people, some people that, you know, they need to need to get along with people so they can do business. But I, I'm really big on building a relationship with them by asking them questions, seeing what they like, what's important to them. And so I met, I met someone on Facebook. They came in today. They were super excited. You know, I, I listened to them. You know, I asked them questions. And, you know, I helped them with their, their family solutions. We gave all three of the family members a policy, right? But um, as far as you, you mentioning the caucus, I'm, I'm the president of the West Tennessee Women's Political Caucus here. And yes, we are bipartisan Republicans and Democrats. So we have both. And so, you know, like you said, having to be likable on both levels, you can't show that, um, that bias. The bias, good you word. Treat everybody equal, right? And so that really does help flex that much work that muscle because it's a muscle that you have to work. So if you, you don't ever be, get put into positions or opportunities where you have to actually learn how to work with different types of people, then you won't be able to strengthen that muscle. It's no different than being an athlete. A everything that I do in life, I swear I can compare it to being an athlete. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like you have to work that muscle. So I think experience in that area, too, uh, has definitely helped me become more likable because at the end of the day, you're running a campaign. You're trying to win the votes. I love so it. it's just like, I, 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 you know, that that's really helped for me. And for people that are not in a political realm or have that opportunity to do so uh, on that level, you can still go to these networking events. You can get involved in different things that are, are local that you got to get in uncomfortable situations. I was uncomfortable the first yep. time I had to speak in front, of a, in front of a group like that, you know? And, I, and by the way, that's something, Rodolfo, we were talking about this in Tulum. I said, relationships is not something that you really build on Zoom. Mm -hmm. right? That's right. Yeah, you, that's yeah. how we started the conversation, man, if you yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And by the way, I wonder what your thoughts are in the comments section for those of you watching this right now. Can you really build significant, trusting relationships with people just on Zoom, put it in the comment section below. Rodolfo, I want you to take this one. Uh, unless you had a feedback on that one. Mm -hmm. Did you have feedback on, on that one? On the likability. Yeah, go ahead. So we started the conversation on, uh, man, I mean, uh, like, uh, humans were becoming so awkward now because everything is like virtual. Like uh, we mentioned this, like uh, like people go, look, at, let, let me tell you this story. So we're in the office. I have a big office over here, 8,000, 9,000 square feet. And I, and, I, and I see these guys that is they, they are in the same office, same office. I mean, uh, in the same place, right? But they were doing Zoom. You're not going to believe it. They were doing Zoom between each other. I said, why are you doing it? I mean, uh, why, why are you doing it? And I go, brother, you're connected with that. Yeah, we're waiting for somebody. No, no, bro. Like, I mean, you can. Meet <laughs> each other, okay? yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, we have become awkward. We have become, um, it's not normal to say hi and meet people and shake hands. And, and I get it. I mean, it hasn't been easy with the, with the, what we happened in the last two years. It hasn't been easy. But this time for us to start connecting again, that's the way that you build trust, build connections with people. We just went to Mexico for the vacation. Imagine doing the vacation on Zoom. Sheesh. Imagine imagine having those conversations in, in, in uh, let's just having dinner with Zoom and uh, People, it's, it's like dating. You know, we're having this conversation about Tinder. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> dating now. And uh, yeah, you can have a lot of dates, but you're not going to have a real connection if you don't actually go and build a relationship, meet that person and get to know the other person. So uh, like ability has to do with that. Getting connection has to do with that. Getting to know the other person. And how do we become more likable? Um, well, uh, my... Uh, we had the chance to interview the Hatch twins, right? You remember that interview, Matt? Sure, they, for sure. Uh, 
you know what we're doing some social media but we really blew up when we started being ourselves like for me that's the formula of likability sometimes we trying to be somebody else that we are not we're not and we look awkward when we are ourselves people like that right. people love that they have you seen that i was watching the the, the rock Dwayne johnson uh, uh instagram and they're making jokes about uh, between each other with uh, Kevin Hart. Hilarious, okay? You don't see no all these combos. Oh yeah. And it's so funny because they look likable. They are transparent. They're making fun of each other. They're so likable. If you if you watch it, I don't know if you're looking at it right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm looking for it. It, it. I was today. I went and I and I watched. I'm cracking myself. I'm laughing by myself because these guys are just being themselves. Just being themselves, having it, fun. Rodolfo, it was kind of like us in uh, Montana jumping, <laughs> jumping in the snow. <laughs> Let's take a look at this. Look at this. That one, that one. Uh, oh, you know what? I didn't share this computer sound. Let me, let me share. Let me sh make sure I share the computer sound. There it is. Might have a concussion, but that ain't got a mother thing to do with my motive. I'm gonna be honest. I ain't feeling too. Good. <laughs> well, this is a good question. Why is Dwayne Johnson called The Rock? Well, he's stupid. I'm, what do you mean? I'm stupid. Because he's IQ. I that, am. That Dwayne is dumb as a rock. No. <laughs> oh, I don't want. Oh, I'm so big. Oh, oh drop me. I'm The Rock. I'm the biggest yeah, box office movie star. The joke's not supposed to go on that long. That's how The Rock walks. <laughs> <laughs> big dog Z. Little crying puppy stay on the porch. I heard you talking about the little dogs. It's hurt my neck. It's hurt my neck. You got this, Kevin. You're one with the animal. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh shit. That's good. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's, it's like it's like ability, man. It's like a Billy. <laughs> oh, this is a good question. Uh, Why is this guy start? Um, by the way, you've never seen this before? Never that was hilarious. It? That's hilarious, man. That's hilarious. That's it. But uh, mm -hmm. let's let's take let's take a little area of increasing our likability. What about energy? Energy. Say, well, I'll, I'll give you thirty seconds. What's your what's your thoughts on energy? Energy is everything, and it. It comes very natural to me. I was just telling another uh, young lady, I was like, I'm, it's normal for me to be, for me to be up here, you know? And I, I had someone come in yesterday and I was like, oh, babe, you know, I need you. Cause my husband's like more like, you know, and I'm like, always like energized, but energy is everything. You can change somebody's day by having higher energy. Um, you can just change the entire culture, entire environment of everything by having good, positive energy. Right? That's everything. If we want some, some negativity, we can go outside. That's that's easy to be found. But that's very important to be conscious. Check your energy. Be very, very, very conscious of, of your level of energy. You know, so it's everything. Like I said, everything. Rodolfo, what about you? What, what's your thoughts on well, energy? Well, the same as you. You remember when Patrick says you have a great energy, man. Mm -hmm. So let me what happened? Energy is up. You need to be busy. So we're in Mexico. And um, you know, we're like, here's what happened to me. You, you're in Mexico, all this inclusive, and they put all this dessert and all this food and everything, uh, uh, all this chip and everything. And oh, you know what, I'm gonna eat. Anyway, I start eating, eating, eating. Uh, and they were bringing me this tamarindo, tamarindo uh, juice, right? Oh my gosh, and I tell, this is delicious. And all of a sudden I'm at four tamarindos, you know, these juices. And I'm asking, what does he have this thing? Can, can you? And the guys, we're putting tequila in this tamarindo. I didn't know they were putting so, so much tequila. I didn't know that, but we were on vacation, so I didn't know that. But all of a sudden, so that was the kind of the second day, right? We or third day. Then, then the fourth day to say, what's up with my energy? <laughs> what's usually I wake up, brother. I'm a 5:15. I'm a 5:15, 5:30 type of guy. I'm up. I'm at 6 a.m. in the gym. And all of a sudden, after my third day over there in Mexico, ooh, what happened in here? We had a big dinner. You remember we went to we went to Harry's. This is the day after uh, what you call it. The day after we went to the other place, Sonora. This the steak place. Oh yeah, the creek, yeah downtown oh, Tulum. Yeah. Gosh, yes. Playa. Yeah. So the next day I wake up and I, 
look, what happened to the time? What happened to the, I wake up super fast. I couldn't wake up. And the kids wanted to go play. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. This, first of all, this steak was too much. I ate too much. I ate too much sugar. <laughs> and this tamarindo with tequila that I didn't know I had tequila <laughs> until my third or fourth one. And I, and I realized the energy affects everything. Energy affects your mood. Energy affects your uh, 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 your li your likability to energy affects your business. So that's the team. Uh, that's Marcelo and Gavi uh, uh, on the left. Then we have that Daisley, uh, which is uh, Flor's daughter, which was her birthday. Uh, then we have um, that says he and I. Then we have Manny Medina with all his family over there with Susie, his two brothers, and uh, his kids. And then we have Boris over there in the back. And uh, Boris and Floor, and then we have a uh, uh, Brenda with Roger, and that over there in the back is Boris' son. So it's so in the then the two daughters for Roger and Brenda. We had a blast with the team, man. We loved it. We loved this trip, and uh, yeah, but that, but I felt it in energy, man. That my by my fourth or fifth day, I felt it. I felt. <laughs> I said, when I came back, I'm on a strict diet right now. If you want to know, strict diet. You know, when, when you are relating with somebody uh, in a boardroom or in a client conversation, a meeting, whether in person or even on Zoom, you tend to kind of relate with the person's energy that you're having a conversation with. 100%. So, right. So if you're like, uh, chill, ba, 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 guess what they're going to start doing subconsciously? They're going to go like, ah, uh, yeah, let's chill, ba, 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 ba. But if you pick yourself, hey, listen, man, super nice to meet you. How can I serve you today? How can I help you today? And you're leaning forward, your energy is high. They're like, oh, subconsciously, like, I, I, like, I got a vibe with this person. Their energy uh, picks up. What's, an, what's another one? Um, what's another one when it relates to increasing your likability? Here's another one appreciation appreciation mm -hmm. say well you're very good with this 30 seconds what does appreciation mean to you in terms of increasing your likability um appreciation as far as like showing gratitude sure yeah um for me i'm always ready to do that <laughs> anybody that has ever i think that's one thing that we lack so that also uh increases the culture and likability too because for those that have come before you it's always good to show them that you really appreciate them always give them a shout out tell them how great you know you, you appreciate all the things that, you, that they've done also the people that are around you that are doing a great job too like hey i appreciate the work that you're putting in you know but for me i'm always i'm really really big on gratitude php has showed me that always 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 give gratitude for those that have uh, set out before you for those yeah. that are pouring into you that's a big deal for me it really yeah, because is. if you do that the person that's receiving that gratitude from you they're going to want to do other things for you too as well Right. Absolutely. And, and mm -hmm. those people want to keep doing, you know, because they're like, man, you know, they appreciate you acknowledging them. You don't have to do that, but they appreciate that. I'm, I'm sure if it was uh, Tony Robbins or maybe it was Les Brown, he says one of the fastest ways for people like you is to number one, smile, which relates to energy mm -hmm. and say, please. And thank you. Right. Uh, imagine if you just said please and thank you more often throughout your day. You know, first of all, to yourself, second to your spouse, your significant other, and third to people that you do business with and interact with the most. Rodolfo, what would you add to this point? Um, the other aspect of of uh, lifting up. If you want people to like you, you lift them up. You're a very good person at doing this. So look at it like this, okay? We all, we, you know, when we are grateful, when, uh, when we lift up somebody, when we tell somebody a compliment, reality, what we're doing is we are doing a reflection of ourselves. You know what I mean? Nice. If I tell somebody, hey, you look great, it's because we feel great. We look great ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we look, we see in others what we see in ourselves. So the more we compliment somebody, you know what we're doing? We're looking at what this is so weird I mean, with this uh, is psychology <laughs> of, of people, right? Because people think that, that but then telling somebody something good, you're not taking anything away from you. You're giving to yourself more. So you are whatever you tell to somebody else from now on everybody that are listening it's a reflection of yourself so if you see somebody you say what a great combination of clothes that you have is because that is important to you if you tell somebody you know what i'm 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 what a great smile you have it's because you are thinking about your smile if you tell somebody you're doing great in your business it's because you are going to be doing great with your business so everywhere you go compliment no flatter right flattery can be a, a, a 
it not uh, the corny. It's sincere. corny and superficial, and people right. can read that crap. Something sincere. Compliment somebody. Tell somebody because it's a reflection of yourself. It's a reflection of yourself. Man, you have a great energy. Man, you're gonna win in this business. Oh my gosh, you look amazing. You look great. You're improving. You're you're becoming a better person. I can I can. By the way, you know what I'm looking now in people. You're losing weight. I'm watching people. Oh my gosh, I didn't notice that you're losing weight. Guess what? Because I need to lose weight. I'm going. Watch me. Watch what I'm gonna be in the, the next three months. Okay, watch it. Watch out, baby. <laughs> watch. I'm telling you. Uh, I, I love that. You know, these things are what we call soft skills. These are soft skills. Hard skills. To, you know, you know, life insurance. You know, selling. You know, recruiting. You know, following up you know, presentation. But what we've been talking about the last 10 minutes is what we call soft skills, relationship skills. And I remember uh, in, in one of our trainings here in the Blueprint, it said that 85% uh, uh, of what people feel when you communicate is how you make them feel, right? The other 15%, the other 15% is how you say it, right? Body language. And the, other, and the last 5%, Believe it or not, words, words. So majority is how you make people feel, your body language, your communication, your physiology, and the least most important thing are words. I thought that was a pretty interesting thing when I heard, when I heard that, if you want to increase your likability. So for you, Matt, how do you feel? Because every, every time I speak with our CEO, Patrick, it's like, man, even though he's calling us out, we haven't... But after the conversation, it's like, man, I want to go kill it. How do you feel after having a conversation with Patrick? You know, PBD has got a way of not only calling you out, but also in a way that makes you want to improve. Right. It doesn't make you feel bad. You know, do you feel bad because you're not performing? Sure, because you know you can do better. But it doesn't demean you. Uh, uh, Patrick's very good. By the way, you would think a guy like him, Middle Eastern, Armenian, Assyrian would attract more people. I'm just, I've, I've always wondered that. How come there's not more Assyrians and Armenians with PhD? It's, it's, what is it? It's what? Well, what was our DEI report? It's uh, 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 40, what was it? Uh, 40, 42% uh, 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 Latino, 32% Black African American. Other is 11.25%. I'm, I'm part of other, <laughs> Filipino. You know, so, but PBD, bro. Uh, he's got also a way of being able to relate with all people. It doesn't matter if you're Republican, Republican. doesn't mean if you're a Democrat, doesn't mean if you're rich, doesn't mean if you're broke, doesn't mean if you hit your goals or not hit your goals, he makes you want to get better. And I think that's a large part of people like ability. It, you, people think like ability is huggy, feely, touchy. It's not that it's, it's specific words and physiology and be able to look people straight in the eye and be authentic and genuine with them. So um, I want to, I, I want to shift gears real quick. And, and, uh, and uh, uh, talk about a couple of things. Number one, International Women's Day is coming up March 8th. That's what, next uh, next uh, uh, Tuesday, right? Next Tuesday, it's gonna be during BOM. Uh, uh, Sable, what, what is your thoughts on the women we have with inside the company? Because a majority of our company are women. A majority of the highest income earners in our company are women, right? And so uh, you are also part of PHP Ladies. Which one of the ladies, so my two, second part of that question is, which one of the ladies in PHP has, has, has and continues to inspire you? To be honest, it's couple, I don't want to leave anybody yet, but uh, the main two, um, yeah, or three, will be Sheena, Chelsea, and Jasmine, to be honest. Um, you know, Chelsea kind of took me under her wing, and Evelyn, Evelyn, can't leave out Evelyn. And um, this past year in, in her and in Elf have just kind of worked to help me mold and groom and grow me to really be uh, a company woman. That's what I wanted. To, I'm like, how do I do that? Because never, never having an organization, never, you know, having the type of responsibilities that you have, you need somebody to teach you, you know? And so just having that mentorship from those ladies, not wanting nothing back from you you know that just you can tell they're doing it with an open heart and it's like man i, I just want to pour into you and i just want to teach you i just want to train i just want to coach you. i just want you to get better uh that that's a lot and so you you just want to duplicate that with others 
Like it, it just trickles down. Like you guys said, like our, like our CEO, like he's humble, right? You know, he got, he has this, he has this, he has this, he could be a certain way, but he's not. And so it's the same thing from our, our top leaders, our top women in the company. Like they're, they're the same. Like we all duplicate what our leadership is exemplifying. We're duplicating that and they're, and we're trickling it down to one another. We're teaching each other, we're sidelining, we're mentoring one another. And so they have been like, you know, uh, huge players for me growing in this industry because I, I don't come from this type of stuff. I don't know anything about this. And so, you know, just being able to learn and then I get excited because the more you learn, the more, you know, okay, boom, now I have more value that I can add to someone else. Um, so again, that goes with them being who they are. They don't have to water down who they are as a female. And this month, like you, you feel extra strong because we got, you know, Women's uh, International Day. This is Women's Month. Don't forget about that. So <laughs> you just feel like you feel empowered because, you know, way back when it was a certain way women had to be. Not saying we still don't be respectful of our spouses and things like that, because that that's like, you know, you still do that. But you're you're allowed to be empowered. You're allowed to be who you are. You're allowed to be an influencer. You're allowed to be uh, someone that can change somebody else's somebody else's life. Yep, Sassy. Yeah, it's just it's just everybody. Yeah, you know, like I said, you don't want to leave anybody out because all the women in PHP. It's like we duplicate. Everybody duplicates one another. Jen, um, I had a really good conversation with Jen. I've never just sat down. I'm going to tell you this. I don't want to get off topic, but I remember when I was literally going through some stuff with my family. Don't ask me why I called Jennifer Ben Day. I do not know why I called the CEO's wife. <laughs> I was in tears. Now, at that time, I was, it was some personal family stuff going on. And she told me, she gave me some good advice. And she told me to read the book, Energy Bus, which I need to give my book back. Because <laughs> I'll let somebody borrow it. But uh, <laughs> she gave me some good advice. And then we had a really good conversation. Um, we were in Mexico, just sitting there. And you're like, then you start realizing how like, how you alike, like so much alike, these women, like, dang, I'm just like you, we're just alike, you know, so um, it's just, I, I really can't, like, just pinpoint, but, you know, I, I just, all I can say is it just, all the leadership, everything just kind of trickles down to, to everyone, and we all, we pour into each other, not expect anything in return, and just wanting to see each other actually really grow, to be yeah. honest. So, let's uh, take some questions here from our live chat as we wrap up the show um i know there's some questions uh, rodolfo was there any questions here with inside the chat box that stuck out to you that maybe we can answer and they can earn a book by hmm. doing so let me see uh, or post any any new question over there if uh, you guys got questions fire away in the comment section or the uh the chat section and um here's one from here here's one from uh here's one from uh who is this uh, here's one from Miriam uh, Rivera. Miriam Rivera Sable, are you still in communication with your mentors outside your family? If so, what do they say now about your journey in a different industry? I'm gonna, to be honest, my mentors outside of you know uh, my family, they have always told me. I remember the, uh, one of my mentors was my ex box. He was a principal. <laughs> And he told me, you know what? I know you want to leave the school district. And he said, whatever you do, I'm going to support you. And you're going to be great at whatever you do. And I, we were, when we were trying to find ourselves in business, he even allowed us to come to the school. And he would take the baby, when my, Ryan, when he was younger, and strap the baby on and walk around and check on the other sports. And allow us to use classrooms to train. And we actually got his son to get his license. <laughs> so, But they support, they support me no matter what. They say, whatever you want to do, if, if I have a resource that you need, that's just very supportive. Love it. Hey. Love it. Very good. Rodolfo, did you have any question out there you wanted to take a stab at? For for no, I haven't found any question. When um post over that question. If you guys have questions, I mean post it over there. And is is people are probably processing a question. Um here, here's a uh, go ahead. I think they're um there, there you go, Rodolfo. Mm -hmm. For me. Uh, let me see, Kim. Oh no, Kim Camper. Oh no, I see someone. Okay, Nana, what is something that you were told as a child, adult, that you found out was not true as you mature? Oh my gosh, a lot of things <laughs> that were told when I was a kid that was not true, especially with money, especially with work, especially with that running a company, running a business. Uh, that's from my side. A lot of things about uh, the oh, eh, eh, oh, look at this one. 
How about this one? Or likability. Don't talk to people. Don't talk to strangers. Ah. Uh, oh my gosh. Guys, in order to become an entrepreneur, you need to be out. You need to meet people. You need to make new friends. You know what they told me when I was a kid? So um, the only people that are your friends is your family. What? No. I mean, there is some, you know, you're, you're ready. There is a lot of people aside from family that has cared so much about me that you have no idea. So much, so much. There are some people as it's family, but it's also other people aside from family that says, you know what, what do you need? I'm here to help you. So this is a preconceived notion that uh, only a few group of people care. Guys, there is a lot of people that care. Tony Robbins says this, and I believe in this, this is powerful. Tony Robbins says this, I went to, this is one of his books a long time ago. He says, uh, he says, I started believing in strangers. Look at this story. He says, one day he was a kid and somebody knocked on his door and during Thanksgiving, he didn't have food for Thanksgiving and somebody knocked on his door and he gave him a turkey for Thanksgiving. And he didn't know the person and the person came and gave them the turkey for his family during Thanksgiving. And since that moment, he says, you know what? Strangers care. So you know what? I'm going to care about people, even though I'm a stranger. So I believe in strangers. I believe that a stranger can change your life. I, I, Patrick but David wasn't a stranger for me. I didn't <laughs> know Patrick but David. Pat, Master Pala, you weren't a stranger for me. We didn't know each other. And I can be also a stranger for somebody, change your life. You know who uh, recently just uh, passed the license and doing the business? I hire a driver. So I have a driver now. Look you at know, how people get over. So what I do, I hire a driver. So every time I need help and everything, he's not an Uber. He's just, it's a driver. And uh, one day he asked me, what do you guys do? I said, I do insurance. He said, can I do it? Sure, let's go do it. His name is Mustafa. Great guy, phenomenal guy. He's, for, he's from Bangladesh. This guy... And one of my goals is he wasn't a stranger for me. Now he's coming, he knows my family and everything. What if this guy become one of the biggest guys in the company? What if I'm a stranger? One of the limiting beliefs that we have had, uh, that we had, having a stranger wanted to help us. So that's my answer. Yeah, I mean, what you just said there, I've, I've sadly been let down by friends and family, even some of my military brothers and sisters, they were our veterans with me when I first started getting involved in business. And I learned not to take that personally. And I realized that I've made more money with strangers than I ever have had with friends and family. Like relatives share your DNA, but your family is who believes in you. And when you come to PHP agency, you realize there's a whole nother family you're a part of. We share the same vision of a better future for our lives. We share the same desire, not to be entitled, not to be victims, but to be enablers of our own skills, to be enablers of our own dreams, to be enablers of the own purpose that as you journey here through PHP agency, man, you find out a lot about yourself that you didn't realize you knew. So as we wrap up the show, uh, Sable, uh, take, take, what's your last two thoughts? Take us uh, uh, with, uh, with what you'd like to see a vision for your future, a vision for your team. What are your thoughts here as we go here into Monster March? Definitely the goal here uh, for this year is uh, CC. Uh, we're, we're pushing hard. Uh, our team is more laser focused than ever. You'd be a chairman's uh, council of the company. There you go. Chairman's council, yeah, let me <laughs> chairman's council. Yeah. So we're, more, we're more focused now than ever. Uh, just, you know, the more and more we kind of, uh, we kind of absorb more clarity is coming to us. Uh, we're unified. We're, we're more uni unified as uh, as ever, and so I'm just really excited because we have a group of people that are also just excited as we are and ready to take advantage of the opportunity that they see here at, P at PHP Agency. So uh, I'm I'm just super excited for 2022. Super excited to get out here and crush March and March Madness. You still get to compete, you know. I told you we don't have the physical <laughs> ability to do that, but we can do that here on the leaders board here with PHP Agency helping families and growing individuals to their, their their financial level of achievement. So I'm just super excited about it. I, I'm ready to I'm ready to take out 2022. I love it. Sable, thank you so much for being a guest on the show and uh and uh representing Triple M 
represent in Memphis, represent your city, state, your family. Uh, Rodolfo, what's, what are you excited about the most here in PHP agency here in the month coming forward? We just got done watching the update video this morning. <laughs> Juicy things are happening. We're talking about the month of March, right? Yes. Uh, I predict, I predict this is going to be the biggest month ever in the history of our company. In uh, new agents getting in, 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 on board, in production, in paychecks, in commissions, I predict that this is going to be the greatest month ever. I think that this month, uh, we might surprise a lot of people this month. All of a sudden, we're going to see, like, like I have a story about this uh, guy working with Marcelo. He used to work at Costco. Um, he's been with us for four months. He just got paid a $25,000 bonus. Ignacio Paredes, for being the first marketing director of becoming MD this year, we're going to hear stories about, like, like last month, Ahmed has seen me in Michigan making 100K in a month. We're going to hear more stories. I'm telling you, we're going to hear some stories this month. I'm telling you, I predict, mark my words, I predict it. It's going to be the greatest month in the history of the company. Watch it. It's going to be nuts. Uh, we've got uh, a special non-disclosed location competition. Uh, and we all heard that we do our certain numbers. We had a certain quota of competition that Patrick has taken us to a special undisclosed location in an arena. It's called, it's called the man in the, I'm excited about that, Rodolfo Sable. Man in the arena, where we're going to be watching and dissecting the man in the arena documentary with Tom Brady in an arena that Tom Brady played. That's all we know. That's all we know so far. We don't know specifically where, with who. And, you know, PBD, he's always surprising us with who he brings up because he wants to improve and elevate our associations and our identity. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about the man in the arena. Rodolfo, you qualified for the, uh, the, the elite portion. We're just waiting for our numbers to, qual uh, to get uh, another 3,000, 4,000 points for us to get a, over 100,000 hub to qualify for elite to promotion too, as well as the end of the month numbers are starting to get tallied. And I'm making sure right here in home office, uh, <laughs> our numbers get that tally too as well. Take for us too. Yeah, yeah. It's a save low, take a qualify for it too as well. Uh, the VP uh, levels, uh, uh, elite levels at the VP level. Uh, it's very proud of you, Sable. It was, a, it was a crazy closeout. You know, Sable had monster numbers during closeout. Now, it was a 21, 21 new uh, business partners your business on the last day of the month. It was 21? No, 21. Very proud of you. Rodolfo, you had 34. Uh, we had 41 new business partners on the last day of February 28th. My only thought is this, and Patrick shared with us in Tulum. If you're going to not buy something, here's what you should not ever buy. Somebody trying to sell you on lower standards. Somebody's going to try to sell you that there's an easier way out. You can go, Matt, Matt, uh, Rodolfo, Silva, you can get so much further ahead by this shortcut. But you get so much further ahead, in our opinion, by doing instead of complaining. Right. When you look at your business, complainers are very convincing at telling you and making you believe that you'd be further ahead by doing less, less discipline, less accountability. When you're looking at your business, it's very tight to see how much further you can get ahead without actually doing the actual work. And today, you can make tons of ridiculous yet short-term money. But if you want to build something that lasts, you want to build generational wealth, you want to build something that you can hand over to your children one day, that your children can say, oh my gosh, mommy, poppy, I saw you for 15, 20, 30 years of life, building our dreams, building our family legacy together. If you want to hand over that, it's going to take work and it's going to help you avoid complaining and blaming. And so paying the price of success will require you to pay that all up front, no discounts, no buy now, pay later. The price of success is not for you to buy lower standards. It's you to buy recreating yourself and increasing your standards. And that's something that PHP agency is dedicated to be doing here. Definitely in this monster March alongside our business partner here, Rodolfo and Ceci Vargas and Sable and Ruben Ote. So that being said, guys, please post your thoughts, questions, comments, feedbacks. You agree with us. You don't agree with us. Put it in the comment section below and make sure you share this video with somebody else. If you thought we provided some value to you, during this podcast, please click like, hit subscribe, and hit notification to be alerted the next time we upload and stream live our next episode. So with that being said, on behalf of my business partner, my co-host, Rodolfo Vargas from Houston, Texas, our guest today, Sable Ote, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to help people, continue to love people, and continue to change your lives 
today. See you next week, everybody. Wednesday, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.